In this episode, we're going to add a particle that's going to show you the way that you should go. And we're also going to add a small effect on the background. So this is, uh, yeah, this is looking pretty good. And okay, so now this is, it feels still a bit empty. So something that is kind of unique that I like to add are these ones. These ones are objects that people used to use back in 2019 or maybe even before that 2014 type stuff like that was 1.9 that was a long time ago but now i kind of want to use them again because the song is the song is heat bro the song is like maybe something like this with a 70 percent brightness if we choose color 15 should be good but this doesn't pulse in here so we're gonna have to go to normal mode and it's gonna actually start pulsing to the music sync look at this so this is the Pretty good. Not too good though. So I might leave this off to later. So I'm, I like to always do, uh, if I'm not really, f uh, if I don't feel like doing that idea yet or improving on that, I'm just going to move it upwards so that later I can remember that, uh huh, and th there was this effect that I wanted to add but didn't end up adding because I don't know, I was too, I wasn't really feeling like it or something. So now what, what I want to add is you could add these guys arrows which basically show you where to go but those are very boring and nobody likes them so instead we're gonna add a particle that's basically gonna fly into the path that you're supposed to fly into and it's basically gonna just you know show you the path that you're supposed to go to so we're gonna add the particle over here and then we're gonna edit special over there and the very first thing we want to do is go to extra and make it relative. Relative means that it basically the particles basically stay where they are, even if you move it. So look at this. So we are moving it. And you guys can see how the particles that are being emitted are just staying where they got emitted. Whereas grouped, the one by default, kind of sticks them all together no matter what happens. So they are both basically always following that... Uh, that position that they have okay so now we want to have this one and by the way you can move the particle over here if you just start clicking just make sure none of these are enabled and by clicking c you bring it back to its original position in the center so this is uh, very nice by the way this window is just for showcase so if you move it like there it's not actually going to do anything this is just for uh, to visualize you can change the color of there if, if your particle happens to be black you can change this one so that you can see the particle but for now i would say let's change the texture first to this one and then we're going to go to motion and make sure that actually let's go to visuals and make it a bit bigger so we can see what our particles are and now we're going to go back to motion and make them emit in all directions and now you guys can see it's starting to look good and we want to reduce the posvar to maybe around three. We're going to add three over here so that it's like a rectangle, as you guys can see, by clicking one. This basically shows you the posvar, you guys can see. And now if you move it around, it already looks pretty nice. But I think that the particles are emitting on a very high radius, which is why instead of reducing the speed or reducing the lifetime, what I like to do is actually keeping the speed and keeping the lifetime and adding a little bit of acceleration radius, which kind of makes them shoot out and then go back again, which if you run like that looks very, very nice. This is awesome looking. This is very nice. So 30 particles sounds good. Make sure to click on calc every now and then because sometimes you forget after changing one of these three or four values. And yeah, we're going to have a nice fade out of 0 0.2. And what I'm also going to do is that I'm going to add a little bit more lifetime and a bit more particles. This way you have more time to react because the particle is going to be flying in front of you. And yeah, you're going to have to see the path. And now the interesting thing comes into play. How do we move this to where we want? Well, there are many, many ways of doing that, but... The one best way of doing it is using the keyframe system. And the keyframe system is considered one of the hardest systems to ever like fully understand because I still don't quite understand it when it comes to like crazy animations. But you know, you can use the keyframing system for some very simple stuff or you can use it for some crazy boss fight with like a thousand elements or something. So we're going to use it for a simple thing, right? Because uh, 
we're trying to be as as good as possible we don't want to use a move trigger you could use a move trigger to move it to there and then to there and then to there it's gonna look unsmooth and if you want to edit that path sometimes in the future it's just not gonna it's gonna no, it's gonna be really hard so better just to use the keyframing system and it's not that hard the keyframing system is not that hard so what you want to do is firstly add a keyframe on top of the particle so this is our particle add this keyframe this is called a keyframe and then you want to copy and paste it you can't place another one it has to be copy and paste it so that you see this line look at this so if i place another one you're not going to see the line because you should select the first one and then Control d copy and paste and now you can move it around and then copy and paste move it around copy and paste around around just choose the path exactly like that and then we're gonna go actually no, we're not gonna go straight we're gonna go kind of like that so it doesn't look too bad and now we want to go to custom select all of the keyframes make sure that select filter is on and now we're gonna select all of the keyframes now we're gonna go back to none so we don't forget and now go to edit object this looks scary i almost uh, pissed my pants when i saw this not really but <laughs> I figured it all out, so don't worry. It's all gonna be easy. And we're not even gonna use like 80% of this menu, so... <laughs> what we want to do first is we wanna change the... Actually, we're not gonna use this menu yet. We wanna go to Edit Group first. So we're gonna go and give all of these keyframes a group ID. Say, for example, 44. And then your particle, this one that we added, you also wanna give a group ID of... 45 for example and now you want to place this keyframe trigger this is a keyframe trigger you place it in here and uh, okay remember keyframes are on 44 and the particle is on 45 so then you click on here edit object and this one 45 for the particle so this one's the, the object that's going to move and the animation is 44 so this is basically the, this animation, like the keyframes. And now if you start, you're going to see that the particle is moving exactly along that path. And this is awesome because if you want to do a counter route, you can simply just do this. It's super easy. Instead of adding move triggers like a thousand ones and then changing them and then doing all the weird stuff, you can just do that. And you can see that it already looks, looks pretty good, I must say. But to make this look even better, you guys saw that we have a lot of settings. So we can do this like a, what's it called? Like a curve. We can do curve. And now you can see that the lines are no longer straight, which is awesome. Now these guys kind of go like that, kind of scroll like that. Boom. Perfect. Looks really nice. Awesome. So the color of the particle, I don't really like. And I want to change a bunch of things about the particle anyway. So... What we're going to do is going to go to the particle, actually make it use the object color so that we can give it a color through the base color menu. Boom, and then boom. And so this one's going to be orange. And I want to copy and paste that particle and make it this one. This one. And then I want to make it really big, like really big. So this is going to be, this is going to be like a glow around that particle. We're going to lower the max particle so that it doesn't lag too much on the uh, low end devices and we're gonna make the opacity the alpha value of the particle very low so these all uh what is it called like the sliders don't be scared these are literally just the color so if we change it to red you're gonna see that these values got changed this is how they used to be so this is start r start g start b start red green and blue and then alpha and then the end color for uh, red green and blue but i don't really use that i use uh, the use object color in this case and now what you want to do is go back here and change the opacity to a little bit lower actually i might do 0.2 even so this way we have uh, something like that and now it's kind of like glowing which is awesome this looks really nice and i kind of feel like it should be a bit more uh, yellowish so i'm actually going to make a new color color 19 make sure it's on both base and detail because we want the end particles color to be the same as the start and we're going to give it like a very dark yellow and the reason why dark yellow is because there is no black if you are using blending so if you go darker that's just making the particle you know less opacity you can say okay so now you guys can see that the particle is kind of running on top of the keyframes if we add a spike make it 45 you guys can see that the spike is kind of like hovering over the, the 
the keyframes. And that is because you are starting a sequence of movements, which is basically going through that path. And because this these guys don't have the exact same position, this is what's going to happen. So if you put them in the same position, it's basically going to stay on track. And this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to lower this one even more because uh, I feel like it would look better. And I might even copy this one one last time and add uh, these guys. I like adding these guys because you can kind of give them like a nice rotation at the end. Just end spin, just add that a lot and then they kind of rotate. Add a lot of uh, variation for the rotation. Or actually just add this one at zero and a few of these guys. Now they rotate slightly, which is awesome. With a random rotation as well and make them kind of slow and random size as well like that. So this looks pretty cool. All right, this is just like a very nice little detail behind the other particles. And now if we start, you guys are going to see that we have a path, which is awesome. This is really, really cool. All right, so we added a path to our thing, which is awesome. And by the way, you guys can start the keyframe whenever you want. So if you start it in here, you're going to see that this one is far on the right. So you can actually see what's going on. And if you start it right when the player hits there, it's going to be yeah, yeah, kind of around the player. So we want to start it kind of in here, somewhere like here. And yeah, also make sure to always add triggers like above the level, kind of like not, not like on here or something. And the reason why I added them in here is because this is considered the top of the level because there are no, no objects going to be here. And the same with these triggers, always add them on top so that you can actually organize your stuff. It's always important to organize stuff so that you can focus more on uh, being creative, right? That's what's important about um, building a geometry dash level. I still kind of feel like the color is a bit off, maybe more orangey, uh, maybe more yellowish would be better like that. Yeah, that's that's not bad. Okay, might 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 adjust this later, but this is looking uh, kind of fine. So nice. So what do we want to do next? What else do you guys think would make this part look very heat? I kind of feel like the top section kind of feels very wacky and feels empty. So what I'm going to do, especially for this part, because this you can see like behind the scenes stuff, which looks horrible, is we're actually just going to copy and paste this one and kind of make it go vertical so that it looks like it's going endless and like that. And now... Just make sure you don't see the borders. Okay, so in here I saw some stuff. So I'm going to cover that. And this is looking uh, pretty excellent so far. This is looking pretty good. I'm thinking of also adding a background up there, but it's not going to look that good. So I'm not sure what to do. I'm going to come up with an idea for that later, probably. So you guys can hear that in this part, the, the background is... Uh, not the background, the song is kind of clicking. Like the beat is doing boom, 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 boom. And we kind of want to add like a slight pulse to the background to that. It adds a lot of cool stuff. So we're going to add a pulse to the background. Okay, let me just quickly go through it. <laughs> Slowly, I mean. You go through the pulse, you put it, and then you go to edit object, and then on this plus, and then you're going to select the background. So we want to pulse the background. And uh, this is the fade in. So this was, we can actually visualize this perfectly if we move this uh, slightly like that. We remove the ground, of course, because we don't want to see the ground like that. So let's move to here, for example. We add this one, let's say fade in on 0 0.5 and then maybe hold at 0 0.6 and fade out at 0 0.2. So now you guys are going to see that the background is slowly in this time, in 0 0.5 seconds, gonna go to white. And then it's gonna stay at white for 0 0.2, 0 0.6 seconds. So it's gonna go to white, stay at white for this amount for hold. And then at the end, once that seconds are done, we have 0 0.2 seconds for the fade out. Perfect. And now if you wanna have a pulse, we're gonna have to have these values at zero and this one kinda high. So that this way you have a instant white and then it slowly goes away. But of course, we don't want to use white. This was just to visualize. And what we want to do is actually a very interesting thing about the pulse trigger. You can just make it copy the background color. So we want to make the background pulse to the same color that the background is right now, which by default doesn't do anything. So we want to play around with this one. So the same value as the background, but maybe 20% more brightness. 
So this way, if we go like that, you guys are going to see that it's going to pulse kind of like the same color, but it's just going to go a bit brighter. I also like to add a bit more of saturation, maybe a bit more brightness. Let's see how that's going to look. Boom. Yeah, exactly. That is a perfect pulse, exactly like I wanted it to be. And now you just have to see what the beats are. So we're going to use this BPM which doesn't do anything, this is just to show you how the, be the beat is. So boom, boom, boom. Okay, so the beat is very fast, so you're going to go to Edit Object and actually make this a bit slower and see how the beat works with the music. So boom, boom, boom. Okay, so this one was a bit earlier, so we're going to make this a lot higher. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, this is a bit too high, I feel like, so maybe 0 0.1.8. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, now that's still... Too much, maybe one seventh. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, that's a bit too much, so maybe we're getting close. So one point six six. So now, boom, 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 boom. Okay, that's it. Kind of gets off at the end, but this. Boom, boom. I think the value of 150 is actually perfect. So now if you listen to the song, you're gonna see that every time this green line hits these ones. There's going to be like a beat. So if you listen closely, boom, 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 boom. So this is perfect. So we have figured out the BPM of this song. So now what we want to do is we want to add that pulse trigger over here. We want to copy it, delete it from there, and then add it up here. And make sure it's right on the line. And then add another one right on the line as well. So maybe something like that should be perfect. And now we want to select both of them. And we want to make this a bit lower. So what I'm going to do is just a create loop. And now this should be perfect. So now you guys can see that the background is pulsing lightly, which is very cool. I actually might increase the pulsing a bit. I like to increase it on only one of them so that one time it's a higher pulse and one time it's a low pulse. So this way we have a boom, 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 which kind of gives it a bit more uh, vibration, if you want to say. And if you want, you can add a little bit of shake. So a camera shake. Uh, and in order to add objects into the, this loop, is you want to copy this one and then paste the values onto the one that you want. And then copy and paste this. And then copy and paste that one. And then paste the values into this one. Their positions doesn't really matter after you click on uh, create loop. But I just want to make it for maybe later. So I, I want to add some more stuff. We can do this and now it's important to make it on spawn trigger and also multi trigger and now we want to make like a very slight shake maybe 0 0.2 like that now the camera kind of slowly does like a small shake maybe that's too too little but i also don't want to do go too crazy because looping a shake is not a good idea so which is why i want to do like a very light one but yeah i mean the song really hits hard in here so we have to use a shake all right, now I think it's time to actually get rid of these guys and give the new these ones, right? We added these ones for a reason. And I'm going to add them and just going to make sure that this one has the group ID of 38. So delete it. And then that one has to have 38 on top of the other ones because those ones are for rotation. So don't forget about that. Put it in there. And the second soul blade, we're just going to go to layer zero so that we don't have any... And we're actually going to take these three, because we have three saw blades. We want to see these two are 39, so we're going to do 39, get rid of this one, place it over there. This one, get rid of it, this is 38, because it's on the bottom, and uh, like that slightly, maybe something like this, should be pretty good, nice. Okay, and this one, I am just going to make it smaller, I would say, and uh, like that, and this one is 39. And you can click Ctrl T to enable this like warping system and then click on this one and then make it kind of smaller like that. And uh, yeah, looking good, looking good. Look at this. So now we have, uh, ooh, yes, see that effect with the, uh, with the saw blade, how like, <laughs> how these guys are moving first and then the other ones. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. Yeah, I think that's, that's actually, it's actually a nice little effect. I wasn't expecting that, but yeah it happened and that's it for this episode in the next episode we're gonna make the ship part look a lot more alive which is gonna be pretty cool